this uh, sermon has been titled as missional engagement and uh, uh, let me give some disclaimer this is a daunting task to give the complete picture about all the mission or missions will come to that later uh, in this short time but uh, let this at least be a spark in our hearts if not in that way if we haven't uh, started thinking if we are already into some kind of uh, uh, missional engagement uh, may god strengthen us or to to pull our all of our thoughts and uh, reflection back into what exactly uh, bible tells or uh, how the lord himself has initiated has begun this mission in our hearts let's close our uh, our eyes and look to the lord in prayer father god we commit this time into your hands may the words of my mouth and uh, meditation of our hearts be acceptable unto you in jesus name we pray amen yeah as i was mentioning missions and the word itself just like a few weeks ago we discussed the fruit versus fruits of spirit and yes it is fruit of spirit when it is concerned about mission is it mission or missions missions yes it is missions like how we see sport sports science sciences art arts math maths probably uh, we somehow developed this understanding that uh, missions or uh, whatever we say missions that would go out somewhere to some rural area uh, be it bihar or uh, african countries or remote villages go and uh, uh, tell about jesus praise god that is one of the uh, missions but uh, it's not all that the word if we want to if we uh, as we see the origin of this word mission is sent no you all know that we are sent by the lord or we are sending somebody and when we try to understand from the bible we uh, take various verses or context from the bible and try to see where all this is there but actually if you see the uh, uh, in a total different point of view it's not just the biblical basis of mission what i believe the entire bible is missional starting from uh, genesis as we see the fall and how god has laid a plan for the mankind there itself and of course we see that uh, uh, i mean uh, many people now as you see in social media or uh, everywhere uh, god of bible or judeo christian faith is usually attacked because uh, you know why god of uh, such grace and uh, mission com- uh, compassionate god had to be very rude with some of the people in the bible and even to the point of death even when the uh, king saul received the order from the uh, lord through samuel he was asked to destroy entire thing so considering that people start raising various questions but actually if you see the heart of god and how man fall a uh, man had a fall in the uh, garden of eden and how they were separated how evil entered uh, and this particular truth of uh, we being saved just as we have uh tailored all the uh, uh, morning um, uh, prayer before we started the uh, service as well as the songs the redemption plan has already been laid very clearly and uh, it is very evident and we with our limited understanding we tend to uh, you know privatize this god or uh, 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 let's say uh, yes god has uh, saved me from the eternal condemnation eternal punishment and he has called me from the darkness to the marvelous light but i have this tendency to so individualize or so privatized i will keep it uh, this truth to me and i wouldn't take any kind of effort or any kind of uh, uh, you know extra time energy money or any, nothing we just put it but 
uh, we need to understand the heart of God. First of all, uh, whose mission is that? That's the starting point. When we come to uh, the very aspect of missional or mission, missions, when we think about that, first of all, whose mission is that? Obviously, it all originated from God. Neither Vijay nor NLF or uh, any other organization, parachurch organization or churches can take this or history or historical figure can ever take this particular uh, uh, glory of uh, mission and uh, uh, there was a, uh, a revival that exploded in so and so place. We all must acknowledge that it is the very heart of God that everything has been initiated. And in this beautiful story, how we have been called into take part in the God's big mission. I would like to uh, as I mentioned before, it's a very vast thing. It's, we need actually uh, many seminars or uh, uh, an institution to run a few days or uh, if not weeks to understand the depth of missions. But just to uh, you know, spark that thinking, I would like to place a few questions and try to uh, discuss. Uh, I'm sure after this we will have many uh, uh, doubts or uh, uh, questions arguments, debates, all these things will come up and they are necessary to uh, see uh, what actually is uh, God is leading in particular lives. Uh, so, yeah. What are we here on earth for? Once we understand God has a big plan and that big picture for the entire universe, it's not just me uh, being happy, enjoying my personal salvation, just like, uh, uh, you know, I, I get this uh, funny thought in Andhra, or I'm sure in many of our uh, Indian uh, bus stands, when you cannot enter the bus, when it is about to start its, uh, its uh, transport, uh, you know, everybody starts entering the bus. Have you noticed that? And uh, some people, very smart, they throw the towel from the windows. And some, somebody will be entering, yeah, I have somehow finally got the seat and uh, there comes one person, hey, get up, because I already threw my towel there, uh, or kerchief there, you know. Most of the times we tend to think, okay, I placed my kerchief also in heaven, so I don't have to really worry because my seat there in heaven is secure. But it, as I was mentioning, God's plan is even beyond Definitely the redemption of human ki mankind, but it goes the entire God's university, universe, entire God's universe to be reclaimed, to be brought back. That redemption power is something God wants to bring into this world using all of us. So that is the standpoint. So to answer this question, what are we here on earth for? Or why am I alive today? Why God has extended my life? If you ask me, uh, have you ever come across dangers? Through many dangers and uh, struggles, we have all come here. I'm sure I can easily imagine things how just God saved me from just a nick of the moment. You know, I was, uh, you know, as a young boy running uh, with the determination to cross the road without even uh, minding the big lorry coming. I just ran and, you know, it, it, it just microseconds, I would say, I just missed death. And today I am alive. I understand the very purpose God has kept and it is His plan. God knew when to uh, take the life or when to extend and uh, what's the purpose. So, but as we take part in understanding his big picture, not just understanding our struggles, our worries, our concerns, our children, our family, our parents growing, ailing parents, beyond all these things, when we uh, try to put ourselves, we, 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 we get that big picture. Yes, God has a very specific plan. And in that particular plan, healing will happen sometimes. Sometimes we will have to live with that particular disease or uh, some kind of struggle uh, financially or some uh, personal relationships or many things that come across. But we, our, we need to remind ourselves or we need to take the help from the Holy Spirit. Of course, we've been uh, listening uh, f uh, from various speakers on the Holy Spirit uh, in the past few months. 
and let me tell you as part of the disclaimer nothing would ever happen in terms of uh, god's if we say god's workmanship or god's work really what we claim it's happening without holy spirit without uh, complete obedience without being discipled sitting at his feet nothing would be happening let me uh, put that uh, before uh, we further ask some more questions so mission is from the heart of god and as redeemed people carrying the redeem to work in our hearts with enjoying his grace uh, every moment in our lives we will be uh, carrying forward and also uh, you, you know this uh, cosmic reign of god through christ in our lives so that's another uh, big understanding you know we as mentioned before uh, we have a tendency to restrict to human beings but the whole creation is groaning uh, for the coming of the lord jesus christ so understand the that standpoint of uh, view of course yeah you can just roll down these questions we're going to answer some of these questions if not now when if not we who this kind of an outline uh, trying to uh, at least uh, you know come to some kind of beginning points so that we'll continue to think uh, beyond this particular sermon time yeah all these questions what uh, what when who where how yeah go ahead next question go ahead next question yeah if not now when so this is another uh, uh, major question actually uh, as a young medical student uh, i understood this god is not just uh, uh, you know he is interested in my uh, prosperity well being good health all i mean me being in a better place but understanding what god's heart for his people as a young boy i was mentioning uh, i got exposed to a lot of uh, um, conferences or seminars or camps or uh, 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 mentors bible studies family bible studies what we call hostel bible studies where hardly two three people sit together and uh, go bible in a systematic uh, 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 pattern of studying and even beyond that sitting at the feet of jesus all by myself understanding what his will you know what i understood uh, that particular uh, you know big picture god is not just interested in my own life my future my uh, future wife or uh, you know uh, where i'm going to settle how much i'm going to wear, uh, earn but he wanted me to see the big picture that i did not get uh, by myself i had to take a uh, few mentors help and when they challenged uh, or god spirit again used some of these mentors uh, it really helped me to see that big picture and uh, if not now I, I, i these two questions if not now when and if not you who so these uh, important questions really uh, helped me to ponder upon my own life uh, to take some decisions that i took Uh, and again whatever i am saying the journey that i had is completely different from each one of us so uh, let us not uh, generalize or uh, uh, tell universally that everybody had to go to cross cultural or uh, uh, to to proclaim the good news to uh, the unreached always uh, again i will come to that unreached part and uh, again the scope of uh, missions when we talk about mission versus missions it's not just the cross cultural or uh, uh, those who speak different language and it, for me uh, it's an another uh, uh, difficult thing because i did not study in english medium till my 10th standard it was the only one subject i studied in english was english subject so uh, that was my uh, you know background where i came from but god has blessed each one of us in different that's what i'm saying as i am mentioning about uh, these f- facts we all reflect and ponder upon uh, our own lives in different stages we are at but try to understand the current situation how this fast uh, changing culture is really invading challenging the biblical values and the trends that are happening uh, new inventions or uh, types of crimes that are happening they are really mind boggling what kind of Uh, crimes that were happening uh, 20 years ago 
totally different from now. You know, as a young child, uh, at my Shaka's age, uh, my son's Shaka age, uh, around uh, seven or six year old, I used to walk three kilometers, relatively a safe environment. I cannot now imagine my child walking for th uh, three kilometers for his schooling every day, both up and down coming. Uh, see, the number of vehicles or the, uh, the, the dangers that are lurking around are totally different. So now I'm talking about the uh, now part of it. The urgency of gospel cannot be or uh, cannot be overemphasized now. So we have this mandate to be missional and there is no other go. As long as you are in Christ and you claim that you are the child of God, you are already on his business because his word uh, tells in multiple occasions actually if you see plenty of things are actually they are just popping up uh, on my mind like this uh, psalms uh, uh, 67 or even ephesians uh, uh, chapter 2 uh, verse 10 as we will turn our bible to so psalms uh, book of psalms chapter 67 i'll just read it you don't have to open that also yeah May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us that you may, your way may be known on earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. So the psalmist is very clear. God is not just the uh, you know, uh, Israelites' uh, pocket God. Just keep it in the... You know, truly, in that context where people worshipped in pagan culture, they had their household gods. Even now also we see in the uh, many, in many parts of our country as well, animistic animism or, uh, you know, they have their own household or village gods. Uh, but it's not like that. You see, this god is to be introduced to each and everyone on the face of the earth that has ever lived. Now that's where actually I, I have a big problem with some of the other doctrines that come along which say, uh, of course, uh, they have a different meaning in what they say. But when they say that, if completely not understood, that is considered as, you know, only few people can go to heaven and uh, I'm not going to preach gospel to anybody else. You see, I will go and... Uh, th that's one dangerous uh, uh, pitfall. And also, we being enlightened and uh, that is not just for nothing. You know, uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, it reminds us we have been created. We are his workmanship, created to walk in his good works. He, he has actually set up some good works uh, beforehand. And we have been called to walk in those ways to show his excellence. So that's the beauty when we understand that. So, uh, yeah. Next slide you can uh, show. I would like to, uh, you know, draw our attention to this uh, campaign that has happened in 2009. This is by uh, one of the arrogant uh, atheists in the world, Richard Dawkins. You must have uh, heard about him. He, with uh, some other uh, British atheism um, uh, foundations, they, they call themselves Tele-Evangelists for Atheism. So that's the title, uh, that's the arrogance that they have. And they came up this uh, quote, not just on uh, their own personal thing, it has been publicized on the public transport uh, uh, buses. He started telling, there is probably no God, now stop worrying and enjoy your life. You know, these two are totally disconnected statements and how that has been uh, proved. What he says, if you believe there is no God, your life will be a joyful, blissful and you will stop worrying. So that's a, a scientific research wise or everybody in their personal lives, they realize that only those who acknowledged God have actually, actually 
enjoyed the uh, fulfillment or the purpose or meaning or uh, the real joy that they have uh, come up with. So the, this has been proved very uh, wrong, though it has even uh, uh, sparked a lot of movements in various countries, both uh, positive as well as negative. But churches took the opportunity to tell there is definitely a God and he is going to give the full joy. And there are many countries, many people, many church organizations came up with many quotes that were actually displayed among the public to tell that God is there and the abundance of uh, uh, life you get through uh, life and the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. So what I'm saying, during that period, the contemporary church used that context and uh, brought out the uh, light of gospel among the men. So uh, even as we see the current context also, what is relevant, what you are saying is uh, some 15-20 years ago. Uh, now what we have just seen in the Olympics, how people uh, with the perverted minds, or they wanted to come up showing that this is something we'd like to introduce to the ignorant world, that uh, homosexuality is such a common thing, we all must accept it. You know, that's how they projected, even to the point of uh, uh, ignoring the blasphemy and the position that they uh, have kept themselves is very, very risky for their even lives. But using that opportunity, how many of us are reciprocating, reciprocating in our thoughts as well as in our small group discussions or using this occasion to proclaim that there is a God who is with absolute values and the uh, standards. We need people to raise up to talk about these things. So that's why I'm saying, if not now, when? Coming back to this question, and various things, you, 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 you see as, uh, you see many things of course. I need to be aware of time also. We, we move on to the uh, next question. Uh, if not we who? If not you, who else? Let me put that question. If not Vijay, who else? Or if not the Sanel of Church, who else? Or if not the Universal Church? I'm not talking about uh, those who claim themselves as Christians or sons and daughters of uh, some Christian parents. But those who believe that they have been redeemed, they have been called from the darkness to the marvelous light. If we do not come forward, who else will talk about the Lord Jesus Christ? When Jesus, uh, you know, uh, chosen the disciples and how the, the whole weightage of, uh, you know, proclaiming the gospel to the entire nations. If you see the four gospels, it's been mentioned, of course. John doesn't end on that note, but Matthew, uh, Mark, Luke, they bring the uh, missional, the great commission of God. And when uh, we see that John later, his whole uh, life, how he spent missional, uh, even to the point of uh, uh, his death, and uh, uh, we see that on the island of Patmos also, how he wrote down the uh, revelation from God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, but my point here is, uh, we who have been enlightened by the Lord, we have this mandate to take up to our uh, different arenas of our lives. Different, uh, we develop sphere of influence. Are we proclaiming God in that particular area? Is something uh, I would like to uh, place before you. And uh, uh, if not here, where? If not here, where? Let me pause it here. When I say here, what do I, what do I mean? Is it current situation? It's not just among the believers. We are very good evangelists. You know where? In the church, preaching the gospel to the preached. You know, those who already know, we keep telling the same thing again and again. Don't get me wrong, we need to remind ourselves, praise God for that, and we have good leaders and speakers for that. But are we limiting our talking about Jesus Christ only to that? So that is one thing we need to reflect. As I, mean, as I was mentioning, this is only to uh, 
uh, start thinking and uh, we will get a lot of, uh, I'm sure, a lot of individualized thoughts are there. We need to come up and with the debates we learn from one another. That all, we keep it for later phase, phase but uh, as far as it is concerned, this particular gospel has to be preached to anybody. One single litmus test is where Jesus is rejected or where people are ignorant of the Lord Jesus Christ, that's the mission field. When we say here, we know my here, where Vijay is here, where Smirna is here or uh, Violet Aunt is here. We all know, individually we know, it's a super individualized question here, but but what I'm talking is, wherever God has placed you, remember the placement, it's not, of course, uh, we do not have to over cooperize this, uh, saying that, uh, you know, whatever I do, uh, let me seek God's stamp on that and get ahead, go ahead uh, with that. But uh, it's a very sensitive, but as an individual, I only know whether God has placed me, first of all, and... Uh, Am I fulfilling his work or not? I cannot, uh, uh, you know, tell somebody else, you please go to so-and-so place because God told me to tell you to go to so-and-so area. As a mentor, probably you may give some suggestion like that, but ultimately the person has to get that conviction from the Lord, seeing the big picture uh, through uh, his experience, using uh, all the past in his life. So, when we say, uh, here, uh, it has uh, many ramifications, uh, but it's not just the church or uh, those who already know about the uh, 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 Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, even when we see uh, Christ also uh, in the uh, sermon that was preached from the mountain, the Sermon on the Mount, uh, in chapter 7, how Jesus uh, talks about... Uh, uh, in the context of uh, uh, false prophets, how they come, but know, you will know them by their fruits. And when they, when Jesus talks uh, about uh, false prophets, he uses this phrase, uh, wolves in sheep's clothing. Have you noticed that? And three chapters down that, uh, uh, in that same gospel, in the uh, tenth chapter, again the same thing, but here I am sending you this is actually one of our uh, morning's prayer, correct? I'm sending you as sheep in the midst of wolves, in the middle of wolves. You know, I, I, I started thinking like this. I am a sheep with probably wolves covering, sitting in a corporate hospital. But here I am on my mission to preach about the gospel. Again, let me tell you, with the right occasion, using the right context, and uh, God will give you. If you ask me, I would have seen hundreds of patients there in the last one and a half year. Uh, but did you tell, uh, talk about Jesus Christ to every patient? The answer is absolutely no. Did you talk about Jesus Christ? Yes. Did you? How did you get the opportunity? Yes. God will give the opportunity when patient comes to you and tells that, wow, doctor, your rehabilitative care is so good because you have suggested or because you have given this uh, opportunity for us. When he brings that, I will talk about Jesus Christ. And I, 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 I don't have any inhibition in that. Even to the point of death, people uh, took that initiative. And I really appreciate from uh, our church, few uh, brothers and sisters, they came and they even gave good news Bibles. I'm so happy. Uh, I, I'll come to that part also. Corporate evangelism, of course, with proper due permissions and... Uh, uh, the way you maintain your own testimony is also important. You know, maintaining testimony sometimes is different depending on what the context this is totally different. Yesterday I had a patient who was demanding certain investigation. I would say, why would I give that investigation? That's actually, it's costly and uh, forget about the cost. I know you can pay. But it's not necessary. But patients demand here. The whole context is different. The way how I worked in Roxol uh, on the Indo-Nepal border is totally different from here. There, Patient brings 40 rupees, investigate blood test, this test, that test, you, even medication, whatever you want to do, just give me treatment with this 40 rupees, I have 10 rupees to go back to my house. Here people will say, 
why are you bothering about my money doctor i can pay you just write the mri you know the context is different but of course we have to be ethical in what we do what we believe is correct but of course coming back to our uh, uh, thing if not here where so that's the question as i mentioned this will never end i keep talking you know as i was preparing pastor wilson told me to prepare uh, to be ready for 25th uh, this day i really started started preparing but uh, in spite of preparing for one month i still feel inadequate and the problem of being inadequate is uh, you never know sermon can uh, end up uh, you know for two hours also you can continue to speak so let that not happen uh, but coming back to our uh, you know we being sheep in uh, uh wool's clothing that is something i'm just leaving you uh for food for thought and of course that's exactly next to phrase also uh, being wise as serpents and uh, humble as doves immediately that verse comes in the uh, 10th chapter of matthew verse 7 so my point here is be conscious be intentional of the fact why god has kept you in that particular place are we really afraid to talk about jesus i cannot come and ask you uh, hey you conducted one uh, big uh, celebration so and so thing why you need to talk about jesus i cannot come and hold your neck you know why you have been placed and you know the context people around you you will have to take that mandate as per the leading from the holy spirit but are you thinking about that missional uh engagement or not that is totally up to you but remember we get plenty of opportunities like this when you are placed in certain occasion or when somebody comes in sir because of you i have uh, been blessed in so and so uh, thing then are we using that opportunity to tell uh, what is the reason you know let your light so shine before men that they may see the father and glorify Uh, your father in heaven so uh, let that happen so uh, common or if not you have already started happening it uh, making it to happen okay uh, the uh, last question if i can consider is as a last question but if not like this how can we move to the next uh, slide if not like this how again a lot of questions are all overlapped but here we are uh, going to discuss about in which pattern in which way the way uh, people in orissa or uh, bihar or they need to be reached is totally from uh, different from how uh, my uh, software engineer who works in a company uh, needs to be reached but are they both ignorant of jesus yes to an extent are they re- both rejecting jesus christ though they heard it from their childhood answer is yes do we still have a mandate answer is yes to go and to tell but now question is how so in this way i put it because that this could be anything to anybody but again the primary purpose with which god has called you and you as the beneficiary of this enjoying the joy of salvation how are we planning or asking god for his help to take this mandate again coming back to that uh, context of uh, uh, various things that are happening around are we using that space for creativity a lot of uh, opportunities there even um, bezalel's uh, calling his mission was totally different from uh, vijay's calling or vijay's uh, uh, but if you ask me both of us are involved in his god's uh, big picture god's uh, great uh, meta narrative and we must be we we are the people who know the story we are part of if we do not know the story first you sit at the feet of jesus the other day i was discussing with brother also sit at the feet of jesus learn obedience and uh, you know keep your life in order so that all this holiness or discipleship or spiritual disciplines uh, or interpersonal relationship or all these things integrity ethical issues everything is in place and of course we may still feel inadequate and imperfect but as you walk humbly with the lord we will understand where god 
is actually uh, uh, bringing that transformation in your lives. So again, this is not just one time event, it's a process. And in this process, we will realize mission, uh, maybe the, uh, uh, you know, the, the side effect of mission is somebody coming to the know, uh, somebody coming to know the Lord, but the main effect is your inner transformation. You will understand eventually as you uh, engage in this uh, missional commitment. And anything and everything that makes sense uh, can be used, again, using these principles, your holiness, the way you communicate, the way you develop your own skills and the talents, the resources, time, money, energy, and uh, uh, the inputs, uh, the inputs especially from your spiritual mentors, all these things you can utilize them to use your own creativity to reach that software engineer friend. And uh, again, there is a big debate, words versus works. You know, there is a famous uh, quote, uh, you know, preach, uh, what is it? Uh, preach the go uh, gospel always, but use the words only when needed. Have you heard that? Yes, we all believe that and it's very true. Whenever we need to speak, we need to use the words and our works, everything should be matching. There is no, uh, there should be no discrepancy between our words, our works, or our being, or saying, or as uh, a collective church group of people, what we say, what we do, everything should be matching with the ultimate purpose of introducing Christ into somebody's life. And you know why the uh, why that has that urgency? And actually, I, I mentioned this uh, emergency thing is different, and that urgency thing is different. In the emergency: if a patient is dying in front of me, I need to do some uh, chest compressions and uh, some cardiopulmonary resuscitation. That's, that's very uh, situational. But the urgency of gospel is something to do with the most important things that have uh, eternal significance. Are you following what I'm saying? Things that have eternal significance is something that should urge me. And his love, his uh, uh, compassion that has kept in my heart will compel me. So at the end of the day, I will say it's not because Vijay is so good, but it is because we are God's uh, treasures in this uh, jars of clay and we need to uh, uh, bring that out. So uh, uh, be it uh, words or works or uh, proclamation or presence or uh, being or saying whatever it is, ultimately all of us, we should be doing this in this manner. Uh, and we, we, again, this is a beginning of uh, for your thinking, but uh, come up with uh, creative ways how you can reach out uh, to your perishing friend or colleague or uh, relative, whoever in your sphere of influence. And then corporate evangelism. This is uh, something I would like to uh, uh, tell. Uh, I remember last year also mentioned, uh, but I was so encouraged to see one uh, one uh, person, uh, Raju Sahni. He is uh, uh, a worker in. Uh, uh, he's actually from Bihar, uh, in the neighborhood of the Mission Hospital where I work. But he came down to Eero to work in a uh, cloth factory, and he met with an accident and had uh, spinal cord injury. And he developed terrible pressure ulcers on the verge of uh, dying, but he was not dying. So he tried three, four times taking poison, but nobody is bringing poison in. Uh, once uh, he somehow got it, but could not take it. In that situation, he he came to me asking, "Sir, I did not come for treatment or any kind of help. All I ask you is quietly. I am asking you to give me poison because I cannot bear this with the smell or uh, this oozing pressure ulcers from every part of my lower uh, body. So that's when uh, uh, by God's amazing grace and God's wisdom again with the uh, excellencies or the training, that's the area of my training and uh, thankfully uh, God has uh, healed him beyond medical knowledge or beyond uh, uh, anything else can ever claim, any science can ever claim. Uh, God had to literally use those miraculous things and uh, uh, that's only my part probably next few weeks or months i have taken care of him providing some of my uh, shirts uh, my clothes 
and all that thing. But uh, that was again a minimal part. But if you see uh, the entire uh, life of him, of course, still he's alive. He's doing phenomenal ministry in the Lord. He's a Pakka Bihari from Hindu background. Uh, and recently also I came up with one uh, video uh, how he being in a wheelchair, he is telling the gospel, being part of the local church there. And I sh must acknowledge the church pastor who took, you know, out of his way to literally carry him to the uh, first, uh, first floor uh, with the wheelchair with other um, uh, youth members there and also emptying his urine bag. You know, it's not easy when we talk about uh, uh, evangelism, missional throw mission pill to everybody. No, it's not easy. It's not just that. But uh, he has taken painful efforts uh, and the church also gave him space and the very hospital employed him uh, and uh, it, the ultimate uh, fruit was so good that he is included. He was uh, in that uh, inclusion. Uh, I'm sure if God asked me you know, I, I'm so grateful to God for that particular phase of uh, around three years uh, as a consultant when I worked uh, in Raksol. At, if not for the whole uh, area with the people, many disabilities, at least this person could come to know the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And here, it's not one person show here. What I'm coming is coming to is how, yeah, this is the person. Thanks for the picture. Uh, it's not about one particular person, but many people involved in this thing. So that is something for us all to think about. As a church, how we can, probably one person will come uh, from some software company. We have uh, people from different uh, professions here. And uh, how individually with our talents, with our uh, uh, skills, our profession, how we can do this corporate evangelism and the ultimate goal is uh, it all to uh, bring to the uh, Lord and uh, Savior Jesus Christ. Of course, it is the work of Holy Spirit. There's no doubt about it. But that said, we are not sitting here without any mandate. We have received the mandate and we need to prayerfully uh, bring that person uh, to the feet of the Lord to in, in our intercession and in our prayers. Yes, I'm com coming to the uh, end of our uh, sermon, but here is the word of God that uh, tells, reminds us nobody can ever claim they are holy in the sight of God. Everybody fell short of God's glory and we have been condemned to death. But there comes the good news. And if this good news is really true, this demands my whole life. This demands my whole life. The way I spend my personal time, the way I drive, the way I use every rupee, the way how I parent my children, the way I speak with my colleagues or uh, with my boss, everywhere it just transcends. Do we have the same burden to reach the unreached? Those who are literally perishing. If I do not hold his collar and pull him out, he's going to fall into the pit and die the next moment in the fire or pit or whatever but people are perishing are we happy because we somehow got the seat on our bus because we already put our handkerchief or are we truly understanding God's big picture 